Welcome to Wednesday's show, falling on April the 7th, falling on an absolutely picture-perfect day, beautiful day in the neighborhood. We have showers, however, in your forecast for tomorrow, uh, the possibility of some thunderstorms as well. A uh, bit of a peak of sunshine for your Friday before we'll get back to uh, possibly at least a wet weekend for the first half of it. And temperatures are going to um, they're going to back down a few degrees between now and then, and back and forth as well. So, an updated forecast in just a few moments. A small child was airlifted in McGoffin County today after an incident inside its home, an accident that resulted in serious injury. We'll have that information in just a few moments. We have a COVID update locally, which is also going to involve a push and plea from the local health department and public health director uh, to fill vaccine slots, which are quickly becoming open and available. Uh, on that note, some other things happening in the state and around the country, which should help in that push. I've got some scores, softball and baseball, and much, much more, and also uh, a death investigation that is ongoing as we speak in Johnson County. We'll get to all of that and much more in just a few moments. We'll begin with a few things from our governor where he has now officially submitted a request to the president asking for the major disaster declaration to be issued this for the flooding. As you will recall, that disaster declaration for the ice storm granted to Kentucky, however, for that widespread flooding that damaged at least 2,000 homes and as well left behind a great deal of damage wreaking havoc on infrastructure, roads across eastern Kentucky counties, and the like. From rains that fell from February the 26th through the 1st of March, sometimes adding up to as much as 7 inches in parts of south central and southeastern Kentucky, flooding basically the green Kentucky, Ohio, red Mississippi, and licking rivers along much of their thoroughfare. FEMA has conducted joint damage assessments, and they validated that indeed more than 2,000 Homes were impacted in many, many counties, including Johnson and McGoffin. The governor is requesting those counties receive individual and household assistance from FEMA. Again, this is a request from the governor. It will likely take several days before that request could be or would be granted by the president. Over 44 counties have reported over 1,200 reports of damage to infrastructure and the like and right now early estimates put it right around 50 million dollars in damages also from the governor's office today he and kentucky's labor cabinet secretary larry roberts have said what a lot of folks have been yearning to hear if they're trying to deal with their unemployment that in-person unemployment services are about to resume doing so starting on the 15th day of april starting today however you can request an appointment at kcc.ky.gov kcc.ky.gov this week the kentucky department of education released more guidance on the supplemental school year program which will allow any student in kentucky k through 12 who that was enrolled during the 2021 school year to request to use the 21-22 school year as a supplemental year, a redo if you would like to phrase it that way, to take courses, retake courses that may have been impacted by the pandemic. Also, it will give any high school senior athlete a fifth year of eligibility. Students have, though, there is a deadline attached until May the 1st to decide whether they want to retake this school year or any supplemental courses that they have already taken as well. School boards will then a month later on June the 1st decide whether or not that will be happening. I think it's an all or nothing situation. None of those uh, done on a person per by person or student by student basis, but it's, it's all or none, depending, I would largely imagine, on the number of requests they get. Remember, students have until May the 1st to request a do-over. From there, a couple of things that we need to discuss that we will hopefully learn more about soon. One, well, actually, there's two shootings that are being, excuse me, there's one shooting and one death investigation that's under uh, investigation by authorities in two neighboring counties, beginning in Floyd County State Police. From Post 9, got a call 
Monday of this week about a shots fired complaint in Floyd County. Um, they went to a resident on Bucks Branch in Martin and they found two men had been shot. We understand, according to police reports, that three individuals, Rachel Hamilton, Brian Shepard, and a Jacob Hamilton, were all involved in an altercation, physical and verbal, during which the female shot, discharging a firearm, striking Shepard, as well as the other individual. Uh, Brian Shepard suffered a critical gunshot wound and was taken to a trauma center. The other man, as well, suffered a gunshot wound and was taken to the Pikeville Medical Center and is said to be recovering. I am also aware of, as of just earlier this afternoon, a death investigation which is underway in Johnson County. Very limited details at this hour. All I've been able to confirm is that the Johnson County Sheriff's Department was called after a body was discovered in what I will just refer to as an unpopulated or directly unpopulated area, meaning no structures, I believe, nearby, immediately nearby at least, after a man's body was found in a portion of Johnson County. And at last report, they and the Kentucky State Police, who were called in to help with the investigation, were trying to determine how that man's body ended up there and if, in fact, there was any foul play involved. That's all I have at this hour. It is possible I will have an update for you before I leave. I do have the following information in regards to a life flight that took place in Sagersville earlier today involving a small child which was seriously injured after a TV fell on its face. According to reports, the McGoffin County Rescue Squad, EMS, and the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department responded to an incident in the Royalton area, actually about a mile above Royalton or so near Higgins Branch. It was a residence in that area where the family of a small child says that a 32-inch, one of the old-style, I'm going to say tube-style TVs, not a newer flat screen, but one of the older, bulkier, and much heavier TVs, fell on a small three-year-old child directly on its face causing traumatic injury that was assessed by a paramedic with lifeguard ambulance service and deemed to be traumatic in assessment and in need of a trauma center. Air Evac 118 was uh, requested to land in the field as you see here where it was parked just momentarily by the Dollar General store in downtown Royalton. From there, the small child, again approximately at the age of three, was life flighted to the UK Children's Hospital for the severity of its injuries. No other details were available at the time or uh, on the incident or on the small child's condition. When we come back, it looks as though we have now added another death, COVID-19 related, to McGoffin County's already 20 that was confirmed just last week by our health department and the state. I'll have that and more information from the health department. The majority of it centering around the vaccine that they have and aren't giving next week. Frazier's Prater Drugstore is Sagersville and McGoffin County's oldest firearms dealer, and they're working hard to keep what you're looking for in stock and at unbeatable prices, regardless of the pandemic. For example, in stock right now, Ruger American Rifles in 243, 270, and 7mm, starting at just $349. That's $100 off MSRP, and they sell everything in the store less than MSRP every day. Like this Mossberg Patriot 243, Glock 44s, a big punch in a small package with this Bond Arms 45, 410, and more. All ready to go today at Fraser's Prater Drugstore in downtown Sagersville. Fred and his staff at Parkway Pharmacy are proud to announce the newest member of their team, and yours, pharmacist Dustin Jones, who's actually the grandson of Janet and the late Paul Jones of Dixie in Salyersville. And his addition of over 12 years of experience in inpatient and outpatient services gives you unmatched availability and care when it comes to your health and medication. Parkway Pharmacy, where you can always talk to a pharmacist when you need one. Experts are continuing to try to hammer home that there are a lot of reasons for every single person to get vaccinated across the United States, even though 
Not every single person is opting to do so. There are reports out today that says the federal government might consider uh, changing how it sends vaccines and where it sends vaccines across the nation because nearly half of the new virus infections in the entire United States are just in five of the 50 United States. New York, Michigan, Florida, Jersey, and Pennsylvania made up almost 45% of all of the new COVID-19 infections last week. That is 200,000 new cases in just that seven days, according to Johns Hopkins. And that has prompted for many experts to call on the president's administration to ship additional vaccine doses to those places, possibly pulling the vaccine doses that are going to other states to those. Again, five states, which account for nearly half of all of the new infections just last week, some 200,000. The CDC says that 19% of the population is now fully vaccinated. 219 million doses have been delivered to states. 168 million, though, have only been administered. 108 million Americans have received at least the first dose of one of the three vaccines. And the most dominant variant of COVID-19, the B117, first identified in the UK, is now the most dominant form or strain of the coronavirus in the United States, according to Dr. Rochelle Walensky, who is the director of the CDC, who says that, in her opinion, communities with high rates of transmission should no longer be allowing youth sports that take place indoors or cannot allow social distancing of at least six feet and that large events in those areas as well should not be taking place given the current statistics. With all of that in mind and some other local data, still continues to drive home the fact, says Pete Shepard, our public health director, that everyone needs to get the vaccine. And right now, the McGoffin County Health Department, like many others, is starting to see more and more open appointments. It is a, a trend or a pattern, we'll say, not just in McGoffin and in Kentucky, but the nation, that we're starting to see a lot of appointments be vacant for the vaccine. I think there's some complacency and some other things involved in that, but you know, at the same time, we here in the McGoffin County area have been fortunate to be able to have a steady supply of the vaccine, but you're already as well seeing that same wane and the interest, but the reality of it is we might not have that same constant supply here maybe in the few next few days or even a few weeks for people to get. Is that is that a safe assessment? Yes, it is. If there's other areas that are have a lot more positive cases and need more vaccine than, than we've been able to give out, then they will ship those vaccines to other states and other areas. Uh, you know, with us right now, we've got uh, 200 doses ready to go. Uh, we want to do 100 uh, tomorrow. And then we've got an additional 100 next week, and we haven't got a space filled for that. So, uh, and we've had a difficult time filling the spaces this week for for the 100. So, it's uh, and when they start shipping it other places, and we're not able to get it, then if you do want it, then you're not going to be it's not going to be available uh, as easily as it is now. So, we do have plenty of vaccines, and we need to fill those spaces, spaces, and give them out. And our. Or, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of our neighboring uh, health departments have already they've already seen theirs cut because they're of, of the of the brand they're giving. Is that? Yeah, it's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, some of them got Johnson and Johnson. We didn't get Johnson and Johnson, but a couple of them have, and they still not been able to give all those out at one time. And then with the Moderna and the Pfizer too, uh, all of them are seeing uh, backlogs of of extra vaccine that they've got on hand. The state wants us to give. 90% of the vaccines we get each week out that week. And for the first time uh, next week, it looks like uh, we won't be able to do that. And when they start, that starts happening, then they'll start cutting our, our doses. And we only they only give it at 100 dose allotments. So if we can't even give 100 doses, they're not going to send us any vaccine then from then on until we can get scheduled enough to do that 100, 100 allotment. And some of our neighboring health departments, they've already cut their vaccine allotment here starting pretty soon. If it is yes, Johnson uh, Johnson. I know Floyd Can's already started has cut their allotment uh, to what they're getting because uh, they said they just can't give it out and they've got quite a fit, quite a bit on hand. They still had they did have quite a few Johnson and Johnson still on hand. When I talked to uh, uh, Thursday at the health department over there uh, Monday, uh, and uh, but they were still having a hard time giving out uh, giving getting people to come in and get the vaccine. You got any off the top of your head idea? 
where we are as far as number of vaccines you've given out to the health department and maybe for the county. I know I, there's no way we've. I, I'm pretty sure we've not reached 50 percent of the county vaccinated as of yet, and we're oh, and we're already seeing a lull of interest. Is that? It looks like the, from the health department's aspect, we've given over 2,700 in arm doses, and what that means that's first and second doses. And what that amounts to is we give approximately 1,200 and uh, 50 uh, first doses. So that's just a little bit, a little better than 10 percent of the county probably. Uh, but when you take out the children, it might be a little higher than that. I know Pikeville Medical has uh, given 700 first doses to McGoffin Countyans and second doses. So that's 700 on top of our 1,200, which so makes about, I mean, on our 1,250, which makes about. Uh, uh, 13 or uh, about 2,000. So that's getting up, you know, in the maybe 25% range, I think. Uh, I'd hope it'd be that high, but, but that's not counting what ARH gives, what Floyd County's given, given and what uh, some of the other places that people went to Lexington and Moorhead and got the ghosts there. So, so we're probably getting that 25 or 30% range, I hope. I hope we were up that high. And just a quick reminder, I know that we know, of course, the state opened it up to anyone 16 and older starting on Monday, but that is only for the Pfizer vaccine. So you at the health department have it available right now and are pleading with anyone over 18, is that right? Over 18 for Moderna, that's what this qualified for. Anybody over 18 uh, is, is eligible to get to, to get that uh, vaccine right now at the health department. Um, I understand, and we're, I guess we're going to have to wait. Well, who knows how long we'll have to wait for some confirmation, but we have at least the possibility of uh, another COVID-related death, which would make put us at 21. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we have a well, we have a suspicion that one of the deaths lately has been COVID-related, what we've been told, but we haven't got the official uh, uh, notification from the state on that. A little bit of good news, as I reported days ago, the CDC and the Kentucky Department of Education following those guidelines saying that students do not have to have their temperature checked to get into school, to get on the bus, but they should have it checked if they have any type of symptoms exhibiting any type of illness. Essentially, today, the CD says that uh, safety protocols could be updated as well. They've issued some revised guidance this week in regards to all the sanitation that we have been doing as a community and as a nation, they say, yes, it is possible to be infected through contact with contaminated surfaces or objects, but the risk is considered to be very, very low, lower than 1 in 10,000. The virus, they say, is spread almost exclusively by airborne and aerosolized particles. As scientists have known for months, despite scientists' growing certitude or certainty about how the coronavirus is transmitted and distributed, if you will, or passed along. Uh, a lot of folks have continued to sterilize, but now they say that heavy-duty sterilizing, not necessarily effective, and a lot of uh, folks are referring to it uh, as just overkill, if you will. School districts, for example, classrooms shutting down for a full day of deep cleaning, and the CDC, CDC saying that is just in a lot of occasions, in most instances, just not necessary. So hopefully that will be continue guidance that they will release a little more detail on. With that said, your news today will return in just a moment. With the power to bring us together even when we're far apart, we keep families connected. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. From birthdays to ball games and anything in between, feed your crowd with a Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe Party Platter piled high with both hot and spicy and crispy buffalo wings, fried pickles, jumbo breast strips, mini corn dogs, and jalapeno poppers, all for just $36.99. And here's a little tip. Always get extra mini corn dogs when you get the party platter at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe. And remember, you can always call ahead 349-3626. While our public health director told us of what appears to be a 21st COVID-related death here in McGoffa County in his interview a few moments ago, he also told me that we had seen 11 cases here of the coronavirus in the past week from last Wednesday through today, which puts us uh, obviously a little more than one 
per day average and closer to two. It also puts McLaughlin County up just a bit from where we have been, but still well into the yellow, but at 8.2. And if you'll notice all of our neighboring counties as well, um, firmly in the yellow or orange and no one getting close to being back in that critical area as of right now and only just a handful of Kentucky counties in the red at this time as well. McGoffin County at 8.2, Johnson County at 4.5, Floyd 19.7, Pike 6.4, Morgan County at 21.5 and so on. So all still showing positive trends, at least countywide, for many of our counties, including McGoffin and Johnson, uh, with some seeing just a bit of an increase in the past couple of days to the tune of a case or two a day. We'll closely monitor that. Right now, let's see what's happening on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. A reminder that South McGoffin Elementary has kindergarten registration currently underway through this Friday. Parents, families, you can call 8 till 3 each day, 884-7325. If your child is going to be five, oh, 5 years old on or before August the 1st, or if your child is currently in Head Start or will be entering kindergarten, they too need to register. And next Monday, the McGoffin County Circuit Clerk's Office is asking everyone to join them in part of a flag raising ceremony but a little larger a donate life flag raising ceremony in honor of national donate life month a statewide flag raising ceremony to be held at 1008 monday morning to highlight the fact that one donor can save eight lives we'll be there they hope you are too i hope you have your announcement on the calendar whenever you have one birthdays and anniversaries too doesn't matter we'll put it out there for everyone to see and hear from there, we do have announcements tonight. I just have in services which have been set for a few individuals here in McGoffin County. Nightly obituaries brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And they tell us that 59-year-old Deborah Sue Jordan Hall of Sagersville passed away Monday at her home, son of the late Bobby Jordan and the late Patricia Barnett Blue. She survived by her husband, Bruce, sons Jackie Lee and William Bruce Hall daughter Rachel Keys, stepfather Robert Ballou, stepmother Lois Van Hoos, six brothers and three sisters, 16 grandkids and two great grandkids. Funeral services to be held this Friday morning begin at beginning at 10 from the right hand Middle Fork United Baptist Church. Burial will follow in the Bluegrass Cemetery in Sagersville and friends can call on the church for visitation Wednesday evening and all day Thursday and prior to Friday morning's services. 52-year-old Judy Arnett Minix of Sagersville passed away Tuesday of this week at her home. Daughter of the late C.B. and Garnet Sue Craft Arnett, she survived by daughters Cambridge Susan Minix, Lacey Shiana Arnett, and Gyla Marie Arnett, brother Jerry Arnett, and sisters Angela K. Cottle and Mary Sue Arnett, and a host of nieces and nephews. Funeral services for her will be held Beginning at 1 o'clock this Friday from the Lakefront Church of God, burial taking place at the Tipton Arnett Cemetery. Friends can visit the church at 4 o'clock on Thursday and up until Friday afternoon services. And 80-year-old Selma Ruth Arnett Carpenter of Sagersville passed away on Tuesday. The wife of the late John Ernest Carpenter, Johnny Carpenter, I believe who passed away a month and a day ago. Arrangements for Selma are incomplete at this time, but to be announced soon by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Spring is always the time for new beginnings and redecorating, or at least adding a few new favorite pieces to your home decor. And the Seasonal Shop has just finished resetting their entire home decor section with all new merchandise. It's all there. Classic favorites, new trends, and the unusual pieces that can set your decor apart from everyone else. Farmhouse, timeless blue and white pottery, natural woods, beaded accents, bohemian, bees, lemons, copper, white pottery, and equestrian, it's all there. And it's all there with local delivery, layaway, and curbside pickup. It's the only place like it, the Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. There's no missing that this is the new McFarland and Tinker Law Office location on the Mountain Parkway in the former Farm Bureau building in Sagersville, just like there's no denying that their nearly 60 years of legal experience has won their clients millions and millions of dollars in disability, auto accident, and wrongful death cases. It's where your case matters to you and to us. McFarland and Tinker. Also, Griffey approved. 
Get absolutely every mile you can out of the season with great deals right now at Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Get up to $70 back on a set of new Coopers or new Hankooks, up to $120 back on new Michelins, up to $150 on new Goodyears, where you can keep your stimulus money and drive safe with six months no interest. At Conley Tire in Staffordsville and at ConleyTire.net. I've got some scores for you. I would like to have some highlights for you. I will be taking in some baseball and softball games very, very soon. Nothing I could enjoy more than getting outside and filming a little bit of our our athletes on the diamonds. With that said, the only reason I haven't is time has not allowed. Uh, On occasion here, over the course of the past several weeks, I've uh, posted online in the paper, some positions that we've had available uh, within the sign shop and with the newspaper. I have a couple of other vacancies that as well I need, and one of them would fall in line with filming events like some of our ball games. I currently have the need for a videographer to film city council, fiscal court, school board meetings in Johnson County and in Lawrence County, which equates to anywhere from seven to eight to nine, ten meetings per month in those two counties. Uh, that same individual might also be someone who might be interested in filming some other events such as ball games. If you are interested in that, uh, please uh, send me some details, an unofficial resume of sorts, a few paragraphs, if you will, to yournewstoday at yahoo.com. But currently looking for someone uh, who can help us. Time uh, for myself has become even more scarce than it ever was, what with uh, both newspapers and the sign business. So if you know anyone who might be interested in some part-time work, in that regard, please, or if it's yourself, have any background or experience in that, will be even better. Please let me know. With that said, here are some scores. Here are some runs for you. It only took one for the boys to come back with a win from Belfry, but it was a long one run. Yeah, the Hornets traveled to Belfry for their fourth game of the season on Monday night, and it was scoreless. Through regulation, and it wasn't until the 10th inning, McGoffin County I don't have the information on where the run came from, who hit it, how how they came across home plate and who it was, but bottom line is they did, and they put an end to what I'm sure was a, was a very long game in more ways than one. That one win sent McGoffin County home with their second of the season, so they're 2-2 two and two right now, four games in, 1-0 over Belfry on Monday night. That puts the Hornets on the road at Morgan County this Friday, their next home game, not until Monday of next week. They're hosting Betsy Lane. Uh, then after that, a few more road games before we get back to home for a nice little home run. As for the Lady Hornets, uh, they are 1-4 and four right now. Lost the first two. Picked up a win against Floyd Central. 11 runs to two. And then on Monday night, hosting Belfry, they lost to Belfry by three runs to six. The girls are tomorrow night at Betsy Lane, and then on Friday at Perry Central before uh, they have a doubleheader on this. i got to check the calendar to make sure. Yeah, Saturday is the 10th. This Saturday, the girls playing, looks like, Lawrence County and Rowan County in a doubleheader here at home. Uh, I think the weather may cooperate. Well, Well, maybe not. We'll see. Hopefully they can get that doubleheader in. And like I said, we'll be getting up to the fields before too long and getting some highlights back here on your news today now let's take a closer look at uh, any weather that might have something to say about any scheduled baseball games yeah i might have got a little ahead of myself a second ago and uh thinking saturday was going to be the nice day weather wise out of the weekend it's not so we'll have to wait and see if things change and they get that game in But we do have showers and thunderstorms in the forecast more often than not between now and the end of your Saturday for tonight. Mostly clear skies right around 56 degrees and a calm wind this evening. So again, a nice end to what's been a beautiful Wednesday across the neighborhood. Tomorrow we'll see temperatures in the low 70s, uh, right around 73 for your Thursday. But starting tomorrow, shower and some thunderstorm chances. The shower chances will start to work into the tune of a about 60% after 1 o'clock. Look for some possible thunderstorms in the afternoon, increasing clouds, and look for winds out of the south, southeast, anywhere from 6 to 20 miles per hour or so. So mm, tomorrow not, certainly, certainly not. And that's nice as today. 
and your Friday, while we will see just a little bit of sun, sunny skies, we'll see a little bit of a break in the early part of your Friday. We'll see that sun heat us up to about 77, but by Friday afternoon, around 4 o'clock or so, another chance. And this is a narrow window, 4 to 6 or so. We might have one little shot to the tune of 20% of some showers and maybe thunderstorms Friday afternoon. And then we're clearing by late Friday night in a low of 54. And then after that little bit of a break, uh, showers and possibly thunderstorms after three or so on your Saturday to the tune of 80%. So don't know how much ba ba baseball and softball we'll get in over the course of the weekend. Saturday night, still an 80% chance of showers and thunderstorms before 1 o'clock in the a.m. But that system clears out and leaves us with mostly sunny and cooler 67 degrees on your Sunday. Good news is we start off dry at least early next week at 72 and sunny on your Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we've got 67 and mostly sunny. And then shower chances work their way back into the forecast 20% Tuesday, up to about 40% Wednesday. Temperatures Tuesday and Wednesday, both in the mid-60s. And that will wrap it up for a beautiful Wednesday evening. We'll see you back here tomorrow night for much more of your news today. As always, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Good night.